Revelation 6, verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. From R.T. Published today. Chinese embassy points to real threat to the world. The Chinese embassy in Russia has shared a list of U.S. bombings and invasions since World War II. Chinese diplomats have published a list of U.S. military adv adventures in recent decades, arguing that Washington was the real threat, quote, end quote, to the world, as the EU, the US, the UK, NATO, and the UN chief have all accused Moscow of an unprovoked attack on Ukraine. The Chinese embassy in Russia on Saturday reposted an image originally shared by China's foreign ministry spokesperson Li Zhang Zhao earlier this week, showcasing the United States Democracy World Tour, quote, end quote, listing many of the incidents where the U.S. had either bombed or invaded other countries since the end of the Second World War. The image noted that these nations represented roughly one-third of the people on Earth. Never forget who's the real threat to the world, quote, end quote, Zhao, captioned the photo. The embassy added the same caption to its post, but in Russian. And as we can see, here is the post of the list of U.S. bombings post-World War II. Shalom. All praises, blessings, glories, and honors be unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth as well as men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy to the elect of the nation of Israel, Homo Yusoko Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and as life foreigners of the seed of our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great and abroad. To you I say Shalom and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shara Tazah. This lesson is edifying. Here is the list of US bombings post World War II. The Korean and China, also known as the Korean War, 19. 50 to 1953. Guatemala, 1954. Indonesia, 1958. Cuba, 1959, 61, so on and so forth. These are all the lists of U.S. bombings post World War II that was published by Li Zhang Zhao, a Chinese government official. And in his post, he stated, Never forget who's the real threat to the world. And he's right. The USA is, in fact, the real threat to the world. And how do we know this? Well, when we filter it according to the scriptures, we understand that the USA is ran or controlled by the elites of Esau Edom and who is Edom the so called Caucasian race as they are called today and what was the blessing of the forefather of the Edomites the sword which is an instrument of cruelty and according to the book of Revelation chapter 6 verse 4 Esau Edom 
had been given this sword, which is his blessing, to wreak havoc throughout the earth. Because his soul, which is lifted up within him, is not upright. He can never have enough. He's insatiable. He's bloodthirsty for war. He heaps the resources and the assets of other nations unto himself. He had swallowed down riches through ill-gotten gain, but very soon he shall vomit them all back up. Again, this is Revelation chapter 6, verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse. A horse represents power. That was red. And who was this red horse? Esau, Edom, beginning with his hegemony. Esau, according to the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4, is the wicked. He is the border of wickedness. And therefore, wherever he goes as a border, he brings nothing but death, destruction, and confusion. Scripture says that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear of rule, the people mourn. And the earth has been mourning and languishing for a very long time now. That's written of in Isaiah the 24th chapter. The earth mourneth. It languisheth, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. And the word languish means to fail in strength. And how is the earth fail in, in its strength because the wicked is being ruled and that is why wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth but the hurtful works of the wicked is about to be fulfilled his last work will be his new world order agenda which in the fullness of his, of his sufficiency he will be in straits he will be in a position of difficulty because the Lord is going to prevent him from seeing the rivers and the brooks and the honey. In other words, that is to say that the Lord is going to prevent him from accomplishing his normal order. Right when he's eating, right when he's about to fill his belly, right when he's about to satisfy his soul, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai are going to cast their fury of their wrath upon Esau Edom and destroy his kingdom by way of thermonuclear fire. And all these things are written throughout the scriptures. They are all according to biblical prophecy. And you will hear these things whether you like it or not. Whether you hear or whether you forbear, those of you out there that listen. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that said thereon to take peace from the earth. And who is that him referring to? Esau Edom. What was that power that was given Unto Esau Edom, a great sword, which is his blessing, that was given unto him by our Lord Yahweh Shai when he was Isaac. And power was given to him that said thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And again, that great sword is his blessing, his technology. That's why. We've been, we've been seeing all these lists of bombings over the decades in which uh, Lao Zheng Zhao has listed here. This is what this man has been doing with his blessing, with his great sword. He's been wrecking havoc because this is what Esau Edom does. Okay. Now let's go back to the article. The embassy went on to point out that 81% of wars between 1945 and 2001 were launched by the U.S. accusing Washington of pouring oil in the conflict in Ukraine. And this entire conflict in Ukraine is basically to destabilize ultimately the global economy so that they can crash the dollar and introduce a digital system 
that will be centralized under the global elites. So they will be able to see all transactions around the globe. Which will ultimately pave the way for what? The introduction, which has already been here, but it will be in a more known global scale and mandation of the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, also known as the NFC chip implant, also known as the biochip. Bio means body. Also known as the brain chip implant. And after the mark of the beast has been mandated, after that prophecy has been fulfilled, then the third rules will will come because the Lord said the second rule is past and behold the third will come quickly the Lord is not a man that he should lie now the son of man that he should repent as it is written right now the Lord is basically putting Putin the king of Russia the king of Gog and Magog back into that old former Soviet Union U slash USSR spirit the Lord has put hooks in his jaws as it is written in the book of Ezekiel the 38th chapter and while the Lord is doing that, he's also causing these devils to set everything up to crash the global economy. While in the background, setting to introduce a one global form of digital currency that will be centralized. So he said him, he knows what he's doing. The Lord is setting everything up perfectly. The Lord, the Lord is the ultimate chess master. He created the game of chess. The king's art is in the hands of the Lord, as it is written. Among the 248 armed conflicts that occurred in 153 regions across the world from 1945 to 2001, 201 were initiated by the U.S., accounting for 81% of the total number. There's a pie chart, wars from 1945 to 2001, launched by other countries, 19%, the U.S., 81%. And that fulfills prophecy here in Revelation 6, verse uh, 4. With a great sword that was given unto him, he went about the earth, taking peace, bringing destruction. A key question here is what role the U.S., the culprit of current tension surrounding Ukraine, has played? If someone keeps pouring oil on the flame while accusing others of not doing their best to put out the fire, such kind of behavior is clearly irresponsible and immoral. I may add hypocritical as well. Why can't China do more to help put out the fire? Now, there's also been talks of China potentially in the future um, invading Taiwan. But we'll see how the Lord... Um, causes these, these things to play out but right now the Lord is putting hooks in the jaws of Vladimir Putin the Lord is putting that old USSR slash Soviet Union spirit back on Vladimir Putin on Saturday, Zhao took yet another swipe at Washington with an image listing bomb attack sabotage attempt to the regime change by Washington. And the U.S. is guilty of all these things because there was a neoconservative think tank, which brothers have often uh, referenced this, that was established in 1997 called PNAC, Project for New American Century, PNAC which his goal was to expand American hegemony through what is known as globalization. If you've seen the video entitled The Confession of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins, he explains in his documentary, brief as it was, how the U.S. would sending a so-called economic hitman to corrupt the minds of political leaders through bribery of accepting millions of billions of dollars in loans that would then put them subject to the mercy of uh, their lenders, which would be the U.S. or a U.S.-backed uh, corporation or entity, which would ultimately cause their uh, country to go into debt. 
And if they would refuse, then they would send in what what was what were known as jackals or assassins to assassinate the leader, the political leader of that particular country. And if they fail, and the way that they would do it is that they would stage a coup. And if they fail, because the coup would be the cover up. And if they fail, they would then send in the military. Just like they did, you know, with uh this guy, Saddam Hussein, Gaddafi and all of them. So this man, he's he's always been known for, you know, going about the earth, you know, taking peace, shedding blood, and so on confusion and discord for his own benefit because this man can never have enough. He identifies the country that he's interested in and their resources for his own benefit. And if they don't comply, then he'll assassinate their leader and change their regime and put a puppet in there or a proxy that is going to fulfill um, their agendas while destroying the original um, inhabitants of whatever particular country it is. China was one of the three nations that abstained from the voting on the United Nations resolution, condemning Russia's aggression against Ukraine after it was vetoed by Russia. And Ukraine was formerly a part of the Soviet Union. All that's happening is that the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, is he's getting ready to um, reestablish um, the old Soviet. All former countries that are a part of the Soviet Union. He's getting ready to reestablish that. He's getting, to, he's getting ready to take back, amalgamate those countries back into uh, Russia. <laughs> so, Mosai is moving, man. It says the resolution demanded the immediate withdrawal of troops engaged in the Kremlin's special military operation in Ukraine. Bloomberg reported on Saturday that at least two or two of China's largest state control banks limited financing to purchase raw materials from Russia, reportedly out of concern about U.S. sanctions. This concludes the lesson in the article. Rosalind was edifying to the elect and informative. This has been. Uh, in the news edition. Lord's will until the next. Shalom to the elect.